Hi, I'm Ken Campbell, and today I'm going to show you how I use my six keys to designing great art to improve the eye appeal of my paintings, get more attention from galleries, art shows, and online, magnify impact of my storytelling, and increase my self-confidence. And in these ImageCraft Learning Series tutorials, I'm sharing my studio methods and practices to help new artists make great artwork. Are you interested in creating paintings with stronger design? Today I'm going to show you how I use six keys to designing great art to paint three canoes in a large painting using a limited color palette and pretty flat color technique, but with strong visual impact. Simply put, I blocked in basic colors first, then made them look realistic using transparent glazes over top. And the important thing here is, I followed a good design plan. I hope this approach gives you some design technique ideas that you can use in your paintings. Maybe it's my long time as a designer illustrator, but to me, one of the most powerful skills a painter brings to the easel is design. In my experience, great drawing, beautiful color, dramatic value, and inspired creativity can all underachieve if the design doesn't work. So the most important start in any of my paintings and drawings is to make the design work first. Design means not only composing the painting and how to build it, but also designing the shapes of the objects in the paintings and even the brush strokes themselves. This way of working comes with the need to stay focused, but gives you great control. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you two things. Firstly, my six keys to designing great art that helps me focus my ideas and secondly, my step-by-step -step painting workflow that allows me to put the design to work fast. And stick around to the end for my bonus tip on how to easily dial up your design and improve your impact in your next project. Let's get into it. This is one in a series of tutorials where I describe paintings I have created in the past for art galleries and collectors, and I'm gonna tell you how I did them. When I worked for years as an illustrator, the main goal of every painting was to grab audience attention and sell an idea, whether it was a book cover, an ad, or a poster. I think the same is true in fine art in many ways, only we are selling a vision. So I brought my way of working commercially to my fine art painting. When trying to make my art tell a compelling story, I concentrate on design first, because that's what it's really, really good at, grabbing attention, and selling ideas. One big problem I used to have, like many students today, was making a clear design statement that translated into a good picture, one that really sold my story. So now, to solve that problem, here are the six keys to designing great art I use in all my paintings. Number one, establish a clear concept. I like to have a pretty good foundation idea about what I'm trying to say before I start. After all, every decision I make from here on is built on this. Not to say things don't morph into other things, because they do, but clarity here helps me move forward with more efficiency and cuts down on time staring at a blank canvas, and I'm sure you all know what that means. And I need to remember, too, that my storytelling is based on this idea. So while the concept is simply of canoes on a sand spit in a lake, the story narrative that unfolds around them has to do with the details that trigger memories, emotions, and imagination in the viewer, like the warmth of the sun, the smell of the water, the sound of the forest, or the touch of the mosquito on the skin, or that memorable canoe trip. So in this case, I've created another variation on some themes I like to explore. As you can see from the previous painting samples, my goal was to make these three canoes more dramatic by shining warm sunlight on them, creating more contrast, adding more trees in the background, and playing up the complementary color effect of greens and reds. Number two, take advantage of the golden mean. To locate and build a center of interest in the best location on any canvas that will appeal to the most viewers, I use the golden mean division of space technique. There are a number of techniques for structuring the painting layout and placement of a center of interest, including just gut feeling, rule of thirds, two to three ratio, armature of the rectangle, diagonal and reciprocal intersections, and others. But so far, I've decided to use the golden mean because I found it works really, really well for me. 
The way I do it is to measure 62% in from all edges to find my golden medians. Where they cross, well, these are the golden nodes. I pick one and design around it. Number three, clearly establish center of interest. I then assigned a dominant object in the center of interest and accompanying secondary objects to balance the composition. This is obviously the focus of the painting. I like to keep the number of objects odd, so as you can see here, there are three canoes. The foreground one is most dominant, and the other two are secondary. I like this kind of balance. As you can see here in the blue box, the center of interest is centered on the top right golden node. And while using the golden node ensures I am at the best location to catch viewer attention, I still need to keep in mind what rendering techniques I will use to bring more attention here, like will I use strong color or tonal differentiation, object scale and orientation in the drawing, and so on. Number four, utilize energy flow lines. This is where I plot the energy flow lines or rhythms to direct viewer attention towards the center of interest. I want strong markers leading the eye in from the edges. I start by drawing random lines radiating out from the center of interest and then build them into the picture as objects or edges. Now to be honest, every picture contains energy flow lines. So what I'm talking about here is taking control of the objects and edges to enhance the movement of the viewer's gaze to my intended center of interest. Now you're thinking like an illustrator. Number five, clearly map out light effects in grayscale. I assign values or shades of gray, paying attention to NOTAN guidelines. In this case, grayscale NOTAN is the harmony of light and dark values. I use a simple five value palette, putting overall lighter values in the background and darker values towards the foreground. This step is key into creating a realistic impression. I have found that believable highlights and shadows are the most compelling descriptions of objects, more so than drawing or color alone. And number six, plan color harmony. Here I assign colors, paying attention to my favorite 70, 20, 10 harmonies, where the dominant color, green in this case, occupies about 70% of the picture. The complementary color, which is red, occupies 20%, and the discordant colors occupy 10%. I'm only using the orange discordant color here. As an easy way to remember these proportions, remember gallons, quarts, and pints. It's important to say that I'm less interested in matching color to nature here. Rather, I want to pick colors that work best chromatically with each other from my double primary color wheel. So often, my color work is very creative. I'll list the materials I used in the accompanying notes below. After the main job of design is completed, and with the planning still in my head, I switch to real-time rendering and begin painting workflow where I actually make the artwork focusing on four key areas, drawing, values, edges, and color. My painting workflow is broken into sittings, each a day or so apart, which allows the oil paint time to dry. Sometimes I work faster and it may only take three sittings. In this case, I used 10 sittings. I've described the major tasks in each sitting so that you can follow along. Here's an important tip. One of the best ways to track and analyze your design process is to 
record your art at the end of each painting session or sitting. So I take lots of photos that I can review while I compare various sittings in my painting process. For example, I can see where I was, I can compare this where, where I am, I can see my progress or lack of progress, I can commit to fixing bad repetitive behavior, I can take advantage of shortcuts I've found. I find working with photos gives me insight into how to work better, and I highly recommend my students do this too. So, in summary, if you need to ramp up your painting design to increase artwork eye appeal, to get more attention in an art show, gallery, online, or in print, to tell your story with more impact and persuasion, and to increase your self-confidence that you're doing your very best artwork, then I recommend practicing the six keys to designing great art. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you found this video useful for improving your success in the studio. For more art tutorials, make sure to click the like, subscribe, and comment buttons, and check out the information links below. For more, check out my website at kencampbellfineart.com. See you next time.